Hi, I'm Carl. Welcome to Saturday Shop Tour. This week, we go behind the scenes of the Bristol Riverside Theater, located in my hometown, historic Bristol Borough, Pennsylvania. Let's get started. Welcome to Bristol Riverside Theater. I'm Susan Atkinson. I'm the founding director. Welcome. And I'm Keith Baker, the artistic director of BRT. And welcome. We have some things to show you. Let's see. If we do that, and if we do that, <laughs> is that better? So, I, this is the theater without any um, obviously actors or a large set on stage. The set that you see was especially, rather specially constructed for our production of Cabaret. And interestingly, when we had two saw performances on March 13th, literally everyone had to leave and none of this was really touched uh, since then. So, as you see um, around the set, the stage is empty, it's bare. That stair those staircases, the balcony up above, that's all built for cabaret. The brick walls on either side are all part of the cabaret set. Down here in front of the stage, we took out uh, a row of seats uh, from the regular uh, audience in order to make cafe tables and a kind of uh, cafe down there in front of the stage. Um, and uh, so we use the in entire thing. There, there's a side stage over here. There's a side stage over there. We used everything uh, in, the, uh, in the setting for Cabaret. You also see a lot of lights uh, sitting on the, on the floor, uh, hanging in the air uh, up above. Uh, there in back of the set are all of these lights. Uh, we have some, and here along the front edge uh, of the balcony um, are lights, uh, all up here. And, and the projectors. And projectors. Uh, and for this particular show, I think uh, I asked for nine projectors because all of these surfaces on either side of the stage, including the stage itself, were used as video projection surfaces, including the back wall. That back wall is normally black, so it would disappear purposefully. Uh, it was painted that color because the video showed up so much better on a lighter surface, obviously. But the idea was that the videos that were going on all around the set were of Germany uh, in 1929 and 1930. So that the actual story of Cabaret was set within the story, a visible story of Germany during the period. Right here behind you is where uh, all of the sound for the show is controlled. It has cloth all over it now, of course, covering it up. That's his. And this is Good. the monitor, that the two monitors that he gets his cues from. And we use QLab, if anybody's a techie, you know what that is. Uh, there's amplifiers all down here. There are more upstairs when we go upstairs. But this is how the sound is generated by the engineer back here. And as you can see, those black... Uh, rectangles on the set, those are actual, those are speakers, actually, and so that the sound comes clearly to the audience and so on both sides of the stage. Um, so as we go down toward the stage, if we turn around, once we're down here, if we turn around and look up there, That is what we call our, our um, stage manager booth. And the stage manager who has uh, what is called the Bible, which is every cue, every aspect of the show in a single place, 
uh, calls the show from up there, along with a lot of the lighting cues. The lighting uh, director is also up there a lot of times. Uh, but they are up there. They can see the show clearly down here. And they call all of the light cues, every sound cue, every backstage cue, everything comes from that person that's sitting up there. Uh, in that booth. I hate the fact that they're so far away from us. Being an actor, uh, as I was starting out in this profession, the stage manager was always right there, uh, on stage right, right behind the uh, proscenium. So that if an actor ever forgot a line and really didn't know what was next, they could find their way over to that side of the stage and the stage manager would simply give them the line. Well, as contemporary training has it, they have moved the stage manager now all the way up there. So there's no help for us poor actors down here. We have to figure it out on our own, get out of our own trouble. Um, Keep. But it works most of the time. What? It might be interesting to look at this, how the technologies come together. This is designed by the set designer. Right. And behind <clears throat> it, you have a very, very contemporary inky light, they're called. And if you can see it, it's a very small light within it. But all the audience sees is the shell. That is just for this production. I don't think people understand that completely. This proscenium and the brick wall and all the fabric on that wall is just for cabaret. So when people say, how much does a show cost? I shudder to tell them because theater is probably one of the most labor-intensive, <laughs> uh, financially intensive. This costs close to half a million dollars with, with not just the set, of course, but all the actors and the lighting and the sound and everybody else. I mentioned, showed you the soundboard up there. Uh, all the microphones from all the actors go through there, plus all the sound for the band and things like that. Why don't we go up on stage and we'll show you but, the back side of things. Susan, let me, let oh. me hop on to what you were saying okay. for a second about these. Sure. <clears throat> One of the things that happened to theater in the 20th century was that these, what we call footlights, and what the British call floaters, these footlights were lit by candles in the 19th century. And when electric light came into use, uh, those candles obviously went away, and there were electric bulbs, different kinds of electric lighting fixtures in here. They were so much brighter than the candles. That is when what we call the fourth wall began to be established. Because when these are on with these lights, these kinds of lights in them, the, the uh, actors can't see the audience. When they used to be candles, the actors could see the audiences very clearly. And of course, in Shakespeare's time and uh, the, uh, the theater of that period, which was always performed in the afternoon, the actors always saw the audience very clearly. Uh, that's changed entirely in the 20th century and continues on now. So just a, as a side note. So let's go up on stage and we'll show you what is behind. If you get up close here, you can see this is fabricated brick. Then we have a wonderful scenic painter, Rada, who uh, paints everything. It's white when it comes in and she paints it so it looks like real brick. And you see the half table. We take a table and cut it in half to make it look like, continue the image. And then... Well, you know, Susan, keeping it with that, yeah. you, see, you see the step right here. That's part of the architecture of the theater. So the reason we have to do this is so that there remains enough room 
for a person to walk through, and, you, and this can't be changed, obviously, the architecture of the theater. And if you look on the floor here, you'll see yeah. all these white pieces of tape. They're glow tape. So when the lights go out and the actors have to get off stage, they know where to go so they don't fall down the stair. That also is over here. All these different colors of tape, they all have to do with what sits on the, for instance, these uh, lavender color, that may be uh, the back legs of a chair that you can only see in the dark. Uh, th these yellow uh, tape marks here uh, might be for the back of a table or a trunk or something of that nature. So every color has its own, uh, its own use and its own particular piece of furniture. Uh, so. Because once the lighting is set, the furniture always has to be exactly the same. When it, exactly right. the same, right. it has to change. Uh, so when the stagehands or the actors bring on the furniture, they know exactly where to put it. Uh, as the theater was built, the wall on the what we call stage left of the theater, and by the way, stage right and stage left are always delineated by the actor. So that though that is audience right over there, that is stage left, because that's my left uh, as the actor. Um, we have practically no room over there uh, in order to store sets or uh, to hang lights over there, anything like that. So that's why these sections here have been built out from the wall to give us cover. Uh, and you can see that there are lights hung there, obviously. And one of the beautiful developments of recent years, which we never had, is this grand drape, which is this fellow, which goes, which is a stage wide drape. Now, in every theater uh, decades ago, every theater had a grand drape. The, ha the uh, custom in the past decades has been an open space without a grand drape. And a grand drape very definitely signifies period and signifies older, signifies a bit old fashioned even. Uh, and that's why that when you use it, you see it really helps you in setting the, the time and the, uh, the setting of a, of a particular show. I think it'd be really cool, Carl, to look back here because it's hard to believe that this is redone for every show. But if you come to the back that the audience never sees, you can see that this, this, is, a, this is constructed. All, the whole thing is, is an illusion. So uh, Carl, uh, she showed you the back, of the, uh, the back of the set. It is always interesting, I think, to realize that everything we do is illusion. <laughs> right, and it's never what it seems. So, however, let me take you backstage. Now, one of the um, limitations of this theater and a challenge which we've had to face all the time is when we do a musical, where do we put our orchestra? This theater does not have an uh, architecturally viable uh, orchestra pit. So where do we put them? Now, indeed, sometimes we put them out front uh, if they're a small orchestra, small meaning six, seven, eight people. We put them out there and that seems to work all right, but it's not great. On other times, in this show, we had 13 pieces in the orchestra. There was only one place for them to go. And if you follow me, you'll see that is right back here. This is stage right uh, for us. We have much more room back here. <clears throat> and the orchestra filled this entire this entire area, you could hardly move back here because that, that was quite, uh, qu quite a number of them. This rack over here that you see of things all has to do with our sound and how they're miking the orchestra back here because they mic each instrument separately. Uh, that all uh, is part of that. And runs through the soundboard. Runs through the saw. soundboard out front. 
so that when the actors in this instance, you see the white tape there, and I th this is this the orchestra was inside of all of this, so that the actors pieces. when they came off, they they had to work their way around this way, way out here, coming this way in order to go downstairs to our green room, where they wait for their entrance and where the dressing rooms are. So they come down here, and they come down here. This is our green room, uh, which is a very good size green room, I might add, for uh, a theater of our size. But uh, the actors but wait here, they play cards, they read it's books, It's often they talk. much neater than this because mm -hmm. this is the way we left it. <laughs> And this is a lot of the costume things that, uh, where she works. We have a costume shop across the street in the bank. But this is where they do their, uh, some of their uh, Fittings, uh, alterations fixes. and fixes and sewing and, buttons and... And modeling the wigs and modeling. things like that. Right. Which. The dressing rooms are not large, as you can see. I only lit the one. But we get... We get um, eight. Eight, eight people in a dressing room. This is the men's room. As you can see, the costumes are still on the rack. <laughs> people even left, you know, because at the time we left, we thought we were going to be gone maybe a month. <laughs> but as it turned out, it wasn't. So, I turned on the light in the trap room. Oh, this, this is cool. This is, these are the microphone stand. You want to explain that, Keith? Well, each, uh, each microphone has an actor. Each actor has a microphone, and uh, they are uh, put in packs with, you can see the elastic on them. They're put in packs yeah. that people wear around their waist or uh, sometimes on their leg or whatever uh, their costume will allow it to be, you know, the least noticeable. And uh, these, these battery packs have to be recharged and uh, every single show. Um, and it's, you know, it's a regular, uh, it's a regular sound design. But it's interesting with, uh, with theater things because uh, you want to hide them, and that's not always possible, <laughs> for sure, especially with dancing girls, things like that. So you have, we have to be very inventive indeed. So follow me in the theater. Go, um, this is going through, the obviously, the green room. That, that mysterious door to the right is called the Alice door. Uh -oh. it, it's partially dug out, and we've so run out of space that we actually yeah. store things back in there. So we are now under the stage, right, going across this. And this is one way that actors use to get from one side of the stage to the other without being seen by the audience. And this is why you see we need more storage. <laughs> and in here, this is what we call the trap room. And all of these pieces can come out. It's how you like can, can uh, create the illusion that the house has a basement <coughs> yeah. or a second floor, or uh, you can make hell be down there, <laughs> or whatever you well, uh, We are now under the stage, under it, and as we go this way, this is all the way the length of the... This is our the, first row of seating that this, we removed right. for cabaret. This so is, we can put it back. <laughs> right, and th we're so strapped for space that people are even making dressing rooms over here in order to... Uh, because there simply isn't uh, enough room in the dressing room itself. The dressing rooms themselves, so... And whoever was in here left their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> And all their makeup, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think this was uh, the MC. Yeah. I, I think, think he did that here. Yeah. So as we go up the stairway here, you can see the. This old is very interesting, because 
they left that wall, and that wall is the original river rock, right, Susan? Mm-hmm. And it's, I think they only left one wall of it. I hope. You notice it says to stage left. <laughs> Just in case you get confused, because this theater is a labyrinth. Oh, and to stage left. <laughs> and the administrative office. Right. <laughs> so as we come up around here, I'm going to take a slightly different turn because this is the electrics room right off of stage left where all of the things are kept, all the tools and everything are kept for the electricians and uh, some, of the, some of the workers uh, who are building the carpenters and such. If something needs they to have, be fixed, this is and, lighting equipment and gels to change the color of the lights and things like that. That if they need anything in an emergency, it's usually here. As we come this way, now we're going to come down on the other side of the stage. That's how the actors get from one place to another without being seen by the audience. And that brings us out here. Um, normally, when we're in full show mode, this entire grid up here is nothing but lighting fixtures. Uh, I, what is the last count? We, I think we have some 280 lights. I, I, we're over 300. Over now. 300 now, yeah. Uh, and that includes what we call moving or intelligent lights, which means that a light can be programmed to follow an actor. But that means right. the actor has to go the same, same place way every time. Every time. But those lights can be programmed so uh, it's, the effect is really, is really excellent, of course. Uh, these things, um, uh, balconies and things like that, uh, th the issue about those partially is they have to be built within an inch of their lives uh, because you're going to have 10 dancers up there. It, it is supported like a house would be. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is that sturdy a construction. And those are union requirements, but they would be our requirements in any case, obviously, for the safety of, for the safety of everyone. Now, every time you have a, a, a place like this, you have to have what we call our escape stairs. So that if you go through that door up there, how do you get down? So there has to be a whole, which there is back there, a whole unit of stairs in order to get, to get people down. Uh, so everyone, something I'd like for you to notice, which I think is very interesting, uh, the stage, as you can see, is 24 feet high. So a lot of our work has to do with things that are hanging down from the top and our ability to just practically get to them, uh, to work on them. So one of the things that the theater did was to build what we call a catwalk. Now, if you look over in this direction over here, you see a ladder. And that ladder goes all the way up, and the catwalk starts up there, right next to the ceiling. And this catwalk is completely walkable. Uh, the electricians, the lighting designers, uh, those folks, they go up there all the time. You can see a speaker being hung from the catwalk. And the catwalk goes all the way behind the set, all the way around. And there you can see it again coming out at the very back of the set. It goes all the way across the back, all the way over here to the other side, which you can't see because of this wall. But it goes all the way across the top, and there it is again. It comes out up there and continues on. Um, and as it continues on, right in the middle of the theater is yet another catwalk that goes all the way across the front where those lights are hung from. So it's uh, incredibly useful. You will notice that uh, over here as well, 
Uh, there is another ladder, which is another access, another access point. We hang lights all the way along there, and that ladder also takes you up to the stage left side uh, of the catwalk. It is invaluable uh, to a theater, of course, and all theaters have them. Uh, ours is really very good because it completely encircles the stage and uh, out over the audience. I have even gone so far as a director to use that catwalk out there in order to spray water down on the audience as a play that I was doing called Around the World in 80 Days uh, as they were um, in a storm at sea. The audience happened to really love that. But that was only made possible because I could get people up there on the catwalk over the audience and literally flick down and spray water uh, on them. So in many ways, they're tremendously useful. Sure, uh, just one last thought that uh, might interest you. This light that's here in the middle of the stage, we call that a ghost light. Uh, it's called that uh, because whenever the theater goes dark, meaning the lights go out, everybody goes home for the evening, the theater is never left totally in the dark. There's always this on at all times. Uh, part of the reason for that is that the theater is a very superstitious place. Maybe you've heard of the fact that uh, we never say the name of the Shakespeare play that starts with M uh, in the theater. It is a deeply held superstition. We call it the Scottish tragedy. Uh, look that up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll see what I mean. But it is never allowed to be said in the theater. And if you do say it, the actors make you go outside, turn around three times, curse, in the extreme, spit, and be asked permission to come back in uh, because people are so scared. And the reason being is that the curses in the play that I'm talking about were real curses and things happen. So we never let the theater be alone and be in the dark. We always leave that light on. So everyone, that's our theater, BRT, Bristol Riverside Theater. We're so happy to have you with us. We certainly are. And we hope that you've enjoyed this. Uh, there's a lot that goes in to making theater, a lot of details, of course, as with everything. And our attempt is to make it all seem like magic. So uh, if we can, that's what we do. So welcome back. Uh, someday, soon, we hope, for live theater. There's nothing like it, of course. But until then, uh, we are online at BRT Home. <laughs>